Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Four sparklers in front of me, two champagnes, uh, a carver and a uh, something from Tassie. Um, so the champagnes, first one is uh, Comtesse de Bellefleur, Grand Reserve Brut, uh, Pinot Noir 70% and Chardonnay. Um, let's give it a whirl. It smells um, quite rounded, rich, there's a slight nuttiness in there. Doesn't smell uh, incredibly complex. Um, the bubbles are quite big, so uh, on the young side, um, feels like it's probably going to be one of those ones. It's quite young, but it's got a reasonably high dosage to uh, round out the gawky edges. Let's try it. It's okay. Um, slightly flies out of your mouth. Um, um, it, uh, I, I struggle to get very excited about that. It's it's okay, I would finish a glass and I would probably want a glass of something else after that. It's okay. Let's see whether this next one can do any better. This is the Wine Society's Private Cuvée Champagne, uh, cham uh, made by Alfred Gratien, um, and again, non-vintage Champagne 33. I don't know what 33 means, I don't know whether um, that's the speed at which you should drink it, uh, but uh, anyway, let's try it. Another big bold one. Um, but uh, here it smells, it doesn't smell uh, quite as nutty. It smells more um, fresh and yeasty, uh, as if uh, the base wines have a little bit more, uh, yeah, a little bit more time uh, on, on the leaves to, uh, uh, to pick up some toastiness. And uh, it, it feels like it's going to be, uh, here it's, it's going to be about richness uh, and probably a better base wine and maybe slightly longer aging, I'm not sure. And that's more, much more grown up wine. Um, it's uh, a rounder, more mouth filling. It's got a little bits of, um, it's got the pineapple, it's got the citrus in there. It was a struggle to find flavours in the previous one, but here uh, the, it's got those, it's a slight rhubarb character coming in there. Uh, toastiness, yeastiness, and freshness. Uh, and the finish I'm left with is tangy and um, makes me want to drink some more of that. That's good. Um, next one. Uh, so we're on the carver now. This is Cotton New uh, Selection Raventos Brut. Uh, is it a vintage? Uh, it's, got, it's got various things. So it's got 1551. I don't think it's 1551 vintage. It's got 1872 on there as well. I don't think it's 1872 either, but uh, uh, anyway, let's just presume it's a non vintage and dig into it. It's um, two of the carver grapes, uh, Sorello and uh, Macabeo, with a little bit of Chardonnay in there as well. More honey, honeysuckle, toasty. Um, less uh, sprightly fruit um, and more of those, yeah, the, the um, uh, slightly preserved lemon character that I get in a lot of carva. Some toastiness in there, I don't know whether some of the Chardonnay has been uh, uh, aged in a little bit of oak. Um, no, um, nuts and honey from ageing, that's what I'm picking up. Um, but so, um, it smells okay. And it is okay, I mean it's not great. It's not as good as the, uh, the, uh, the previous one, uh, but it's better than the first one. Uh, and it's, it, uh, but it doesn't taste like champagne. Uh, it tastes, it's got that, um, what I call the, the lemony earthiness of carver. Uh, maybe the Chardonnay is giving it a little bit of fatness and the aging is giving those nutty honeyed characters. Um, but um, it's, it's quite nice, it's quite nice. Uh, but um, the, not as much as, the yeah, previous one's a star. Let's see whether we get a star with the last one. Uh, Tasmania, uh, and this is Aris. Uh, Grand Vintage, so 2005, in tirage, uh, so that means it's doing its, uh, its stuff in a bottle uh, with some yeast in there uh, for seven years. Let's see whether that has had an effect on the quality. And this smells good. It smells like a uh, pretty good base wine. There's a little bit of peach in there, but it's more on this uh, fresh citrus character. Uh, but um, it, it's funny, it doesn't, it doesn't smell like it's, uh, it's nine years old. Uh, it's got a freshness, a little bit of nutty bite about it. Uh, doesn't smell like either of the previous two. Um, it smells like it's going to have an extra uh, fruitiness about it, but still subtle with it, and, um, and with the, the aging in the bottle adding toasty, yeasty notes to the game. And that's good too. Um, mm, yeah, I like that. Um, what's good here is there's this richness of fruit, um, uh, and it feels like they've not added too much sugar when they've, they've done the, uh, uh, the disgorging. Uh, so you're getting a, a slightly drier style maybe than the, uh, the, the previous wines, but because it's had the uh, aging of the yeast leaves, 
That's where the richness has come to uh, round out uh, any gawkiness or sharp edges from the acidity in the uh, in the base wine. And um, that's a very classy wine, actually. That. Um, and one of those that uh, sometimes champagnes, you think, I, I just want to drink this by itself. Here, I very happily sit down and uh, uh, polish that off with some chicken. Uh, it's got it's got weight, it's got intensity, it's got freshness, um, and um, it's not it's it, as I say, it's not got this sweetness that uh, uh, that would uh, that, that would be that would be a bit clumsy with some with some food. Um, it's very very tasty wine though. Um, and um, I, yeah, I've got, I've got to do, taste these again in about an hour with some uh, with some people, and uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, which of the. I, I'm not. I don't think I'll do the first one, but I think I'll do uh, the last three and uh, see which they prefer, because uh, I think there'll be there'll be, uh, there'll be people fighting corners for each of the three of them. Uh, personally, I would put it as the Aris, the uh, Wine Society, and then the Carver, but uh, I'd be very happy with it. A large-ish glass of um, of each of them. See you soon.